Good day, and welcome to the first of a series of presentations on particular cases of patients who underwent MCG tests and the effects that accurate early detection had upon their lives. The purpose of this video is twofold. First, to train and onboard physicians to better understand how best to use MCG, and learn from real-world examples how its application can be extremely and uniquely helpful in cases where conventional diagnostic tools, such as EKG, troponin testing, stress imaging tests, and angiograms fail to provide better decision-making. Secondly, to demonstrate that our neural network is not a black box, we will show you how MCG works behind the scenes to deliver measurable mathematic expressions that are both clinically relevant and can be visually expressed, to better understand the cardiovascular system and its complex functions. We are proud to say that years of empirical data mining, supervised machine learning, and constant optimization has brought us here today. We will be brushing over some of the details of the purposes of the mathematical functions used by our diagnosis engine, but this information can be found in our primer, which should be reviewed first before watching this video. Our patient today is a 43-year-old obese Caucasian male with a history of type 2 diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and presenting recurrent chest pain episodes prior to his first MCG test session. He has a long family history of early onset heart attacks experienced by both of his parents, older and younger brothers, and close relatives. Prior to his first MCG test session, he visited local emergency rooms multiple times for chest pain, only to be told that his EKG tests had been unremarkable or normal, along with his blood troponin tests. He also visited cardiologists and tested normal on his stress imaging tests. As his chest pain persisted, he decided to visit a physician, the first to adopt MCG in Texas, in the suburbs of Houston, and here is what we found. He was tested in two separate sessions, 60 days apart. The first MCG test session showed that he scored between an 8.5 and a 10.5, with four scores in his first session, 8.5, 10.5, 9.5, and 9.5. His pre-60-day treatment tests scored higher than 7.0, placing the patient in category E, high myocardial dysfunction with a greatly increased propensity to develop acute heart failure or a major adverse cardiac event, also known as MACE. Thus, the treating physician chose to send the patient for an angiogram as quickly as possible. Prior to the procedure, however, the physician spoke to Dr. Shen on the decision who had this to say. I warned her that his angiogram may not detect any obstructive coronary artery disease or anything interventionable that everyone else was looking for, and that the patient's global ischemia was caused by microvascular disease slash endothelial dysfunction in vessels less than 7 millimeters, which are invisible to coronary angiograms. These functional abnormalities were likely the result of high abnormal metabolic disorders at the time of the first test. Thus, his physicians placed him on a treatment program based around strict intermittent fasting, weight control, and an enhanced medical regimen to wrangle his out-of-control metabolic dysfunctions during the ensuing 60 days. Upon his return in the follow-up session, he scored a 6.0, 4.0, and 4.0, reporting that his chest pains were all gone, and his MCG test showing a greatly improved picture, placing him one level lower to a category D. Additionally, though his global ischemia persisted, his pulmonary heart expressions had begun to reveal a congenital heart anomaly with associated cardiomyopathy both reproducibly pointing to a genetic origin. His rheumatic heart-like structural anomaly expressions were also reproducibly persistent throughout both sessions. In any case, these are remarkable improvements over his prior arrhythmia expressions. Moving on to the next slide, these are graphical representations of the auto power spectra measurements of this patient's pre- and post-60-day treatment modifications. We want to use this to demonstrate how the MCG analysis program understands the unique expressions of the cardiovascular system by breaking down electrical signals of the heart into data that can be viewed as such. From here, the analysis engine measures the peaks, troughs, interpeak intervals, and overall power output represented by the area under the curve from all expressible and readable peaks within the frequency spectra. These measurements are then compared to normal measurements of all males in his age group, with the results saved as mathematical elements from this patient to be used for the final step of pattern recognition of the differential diagnosis. While the visible and measurable differences between the pre- and post-impulse response measurements are quite dramatic, with these graphs being shown from different angles to better present the information, even without the system performing the diagnosis, one can see from these visuals the absolute difference in the patient's state pre- and post-treatment. Moving along to his phase angle shift visualization, the expressions shown are quite abnormal compared to his healthier state. 
thankfully, his post-treatment analysis shows much more normal expressions, and also shows that his metabolically induced myocardial abnormalities are completely reversible without any interventional procedures. We believe that atrial fibrillation and most potential cardiac arrhythmias are caused more often by metabolic disorders, especially in the earlier stages. This information was, until now, not quantifiable, but with MCG we now have a tool that can perform early detection of these dysfunctions to motivate lifestyle changes and detect reversal to assure both physicians and patients alike that progress is being made. This function, representing coherence, is useful for looking at the entire cardiovascular system's overall stability while also being able to review the quality of the measurements taken thus far. Again, these measurements are then compared to those of normal males in his age group, at which point the results are saved as the measured mathematical elements from this patient preparing for the final pattern recognition step for the differential diagnosis. The transfer function can serve as the bridge to move from one functional environment into another. The differences between the pre- and post-treatment measurements are, again, shown fairly clearly here as well. The cross-correlation analysis provides many useful measurements, focusing visually on the results generated and shown in the graph, where the first session showed a wall of chaos, let's say. The treatment results can be seen visually with a return to a more normal pattern that is much more clearly defined and easier to understand. In a way, the treatment that the patient underwent brought order back to their cardiovascular system that can be seen mathematically in ways that no other diagnostic solution can provide. And finally, these mathematical structural element matrices collect the results of the functions described previously to create these patterns in a transparent and reproducible manner. The MCG proprietary neural network then uses the mathematical structural elements as the basis for the neurons to build the network for pattern recognition. It has taken us more than a decade to build and years to perfect, but all of that hard work paid off and allowed us to save the life of the man we have spent this time discussing. Millions of people face dilemmas like these on a daily basis, and we believe that MCG fulfills that urgent need for better tools. I hope this presentation has proved useful in better understanding some of how our system performs its diagnosis to save lives and cut costs for patients and doctors alike. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website or send an email to info at premierheart.com and have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time.